I have been doing a frugal living life with a brief pause in my early 20s, meaning I grew up with frugal living. I decided to act a little crazy and go into debt in my 20s and then I said, oh, maybe, maybe this frugal life is for me and I need to pay more attention to it. So needless to say, I pretty much know the biggest things the best frugal living tips, the ones that are gonna give you the biggest impact. And why wouldn't you want to know what those things are? I think in my opinion, these are 21 of the greatest frugal living tips of all times. The ones that could make the biggest difference in your budget. And the further we can get that gap between your income and your expenses, the closer, the quicker you can get to your financial goals. So let's talk about what in my opinion, I consider the 21 greatest frugal living tips of all time. Number one is that cable and that satellite. Now, if you have already cut the cable and the satellite, move on to the next one. But if you have not, I have starting to realize that there are certain people that are stuck on it, that they still have to have it sitting on their television all day long in the background because that is what they've been become accustomed to for the last for decades. And back in the early 90s, I still remember when the salesman brought the cable to our front door. And I remember very specifically him giving us the remote and him having the channel guide, which was this piece of paper, and him drawing a silly face on the channel guide. It is that's how impactful getting cable TV back then was to us because it was so brand new. And being able and realizing that people got so ingrained in that and that was their life. I can see why it's a struggle, but when you realize that you're spending $150 to $200 on something that there are now better alternatives to, which maybe just ask a few people how to help you to change and get something that might be easier. Perhaps you need to figure out how to connect your TV to the internet. But getting away from TV in general, I think is going to help us. We don't have to sit here and have it on in the background. It's gonna be uncomfortable at first, especially if you have been doing it for decades but find something else, find something to learn, find something to create, expand our brains, make our brains work rather than just sitting, basically giving our attention and time, which is money to other people, the people who produce these shows that we're sitting, spending hours and hours of our day taking in. Number two is one that if you do not live anywhere near a grocery store, you already do this, even if you don't know what it's called, and that's called creating a frugal pantry. This is a pantry stocked with the things that you can use on a daily basis to make a meal. You have people coming over, you had no idea, you are set. You can make a huge spread because you have the know-how and the items, the basic items to be able to do that. Being able to have that frugal pantry is going to help you in the long run because you're going to have the things that you need on hand where you don't have to continue to go to the store and be faced with all of those sales and all of those yummy smells and all the marketing ways that they have created, spent time and energy figuring out to sell you more. Having it available helps save you time, less trips to the grocery store, and you are ready to go at the drop of a hat. It's funny how number three has kind of talked about early 90s and the technology then. The thing now within the last five years, everything is a subscription. You now read your newspaper only if you have a subscription to it. Your, your TV alternatives are subscriptions. Your workout apps are subscriptions. Your telephone, uh, phone, photo storage is a subscription. And yeah, they might seem easy, 99 cents, 4.99, 8.99 here or there, but those little things do add up. And if you look at them as a whole, as your subscriptions, and you sit down and you face reality, you write them all down, you might realize you're spending a lot of money, as in one of my subscribers noted, $300 a month on subscriptions. So sit down, take those subscriptions and list them out. What are you using? What are you still using a lot of? Uh, does this, is this subscription very similar to this one? Why do I have two? How, when's the last time you opened up that app? Do a deep dive and be realistic with yourself about what you actually need. It might make you pretty sick when you sit there and you realize how much these little things are coming out and how much they actually equal each month. Number four speaks specifically to being more conscious and it is to stop impulse spending. And what I'm seeing as an, a broader theme in our society today, at least what I see, is that consciousness 
in the day to day is, isn't there. We're living in our phones. We're living for the next paycheck. We're living for the next event. We're not experiencing now when that is the only experience you will ever have is the now. You can think about the future, dream about the future, try to plan the future until God goes, nope, <laughs> that's not your path. This is your path. You can try to manipulate that and you can spend all day thinking about that, but you never live in the now. We need to live today. Being conscious, conscious of what you're spending when you're not in the now, you just go about your day signing up for those subscriptions, buying a coffee here, buying a snack here, stopping for, for dinner on the way home. And all these unconscious things where you don't ever touch it as far as reality because you're using a credit card or a debit card. Again, you see it and you get smacked in the face come Monday morning realizing the week that's gone by and how much you've spent. It's the unconscious spending, the unplanned spending that is costing you a ton of money. You have to become conscious of what you're doing and still spend, okay, but was it planned? Are you conscious that this is what you're spending? Are you realizing that you're spending too much in this one area? That will help you to stop impulse spending, which is legitimately just wasted money because if you're not conscious of it, then it really wasn't important to you in the first place. Number five is one that's more tangible. You know, when we talk about conscious spending or cleaning out subscriptions or stop impulse spending, this one's more tangible. You can actually physically you know, save money by doing it. Meaning do not throw away a bottle of something until it's completely empty. These things, these consumables that we use cost a lot of money and we continue to use them. And I am darned sure that manufacturers have a team of people that know how to shape this bottle to make sure that you leave at least a third of it in there and the pump no longer pumps it out and hoping that you throw it away and go buy a new one. I, I honestly believe that that's probably happening. <laughs> Maybe set a rule with yourself. I love, I'm so excited to try this new shampoo. Well, I got it. I still have this old one. I'll just put the old one away or I won't use it all or it's basically empty. I'm going to start using the new one when there's probably at least 20 shampoos left in that shampoo bottle. Make it a rule to yourself that you will not open or use a new bottle of something until you have gotten every little bit out of the last one. I mean, you've turned the thing upside down. You've cut it off. Get yourself a new box cutter or pair of scissors if you need to. Permission to spend right there. If you have a bottle of spaghetti sauce or I don't know, A1 steak sauce ketchup, put a little water in that. <laughs> Clean that thing out and add it to whatever you are making. Nobody's going to know the difference. It's watered down already as it is. Use every drop. Number six is learning, taking active steps to learning how to maintain the things and repair the things around your home. You can easily learn how to fix, fix a leaky faucet, how to repair a toilet that continues to run, how to recalk your bathroom. YouTube, I am not on social media anywhere because I just have a disdain for social media. However, YouTube, I am on. YouTube overall is a fantastic place to find how to do something, somebody who's done it before you, learn something new. This is the place to go. This is how I even started this YouTube channel. I learned how to operate a camera, how to work on a microphone, how to use my uh, video editing software, how to talk about light or put my lighting better, everything from there. My husband's learned how to repair the washing machine on YouTube. It, we need to take more of a proactive position here and try to do things because I, I, hey I love a good plumber when there's a plumbing problem and you can't fix it or the air conditioning is not working and that's one area where I'm not touching all that that stuff's expensive I am all for a tradesperson those people deserve to be paid well because they are good and they know what they're doing but there are some things that are so small and inconsequential that you're going to throw away two hundred dollars just for them to come out here and replace something you could have done in 10 minutes number seven if you're really trying to save money don't buy more than you need car home data plan insurance don't buy more than you need when I went to buy a new car and I purchased it in January of 2020, I saved up for two years to purchase this car. And during that time, 
I researched the heck out of vehicles and found the best vehicle for me. I've had it for three and a half years now and I absolutely still love it. But what the, I realized was what do I need? Yeah, this one looks beautiful, big, beautiful, and shiny and new, and look at all this space and all these upgrades and gadgets. What do I need? I needed a safe vehicle. There was no reason for me to need a third row seat because I don't have enough people in my family to need a third row seat. What I needed was trunk space. I need the ability to potentially go off road sometimes. That happens in the line of work I'm in. And just something that was going to be reliable and had great long lasting customer reviews. And I got a vehicle that is one of two vehicles that people here in the United States at least keep for the longest. One that usually they keep 10 years or longer. It's figuring out what you need, not buying more house than you need. The more house you need, you're just going to fill it up with more stuff and end up spending more money. The more data plan, do you really need all that data? Insurance, find out specifically what you need for your particular situation. It might not be the same as what you had five years ago when you initially contracted and had your insurance and it's just automatically renewed every year. Number eight is to stop trying to impress other people. Frugal people do not care what other people think. Now, this is not to say that frugal people walk around looking disheveled. That isn't the case. That This means that frugal people do and buy things that matter to them and, because, and not because or for other people. Point blank, done. For number nine, this deals with food. And in our household, out of our monthly expenses, food is the second highest expense behind our mortgage for us. And realizing that food has a certain shelf life, how can we increase the longevity of the food we buy? Same as with you know making sure that you do your clothes and washing them the right way or maintaining the things in your home. Seeing how we can get the longest life out of our foods perhaps canned goods, think about this, making sure they're in a cool, dry place if you are doing a stock up, not putting them on a concrete, perhaps you have a concrete slab and putting them on the, on the ground, on the concrete, which actually moisture can come up through and rust the can. Making sure that you do separate your veggies from your fruits because fruits let, let off something called ethylene gas, which helps them to ripen. But what it does to vegetables is it makes vegetables <laughs> go rotten quicker. Realizing that this is something you could easily do, taking certain steps, in particular those two and others that you can easily find on the internet to make your foods last longer. Because again, those things might not be expensive, that can of beans as it is, but the amounts that you're having to buy monthly, it does add up. Number 10 is one thing that I am so glad I started doing probably between 29 and 30. And it was really researching my purchases, which is amazing that the internet helps us to do that. One thing that I go to often that I love and really do trust is Consumer Reports. I think they do a really great job of looking at a broad selection of things and helping you decide which might be best for you based on your needs but always looking at reviews and not always going for what is shiny and what is new. Go for what works, what lasts a long time, and what has good reviews. Number 11, we took my daughter to an amusement park for the first time because she'd never been on a roller coaster. And I'm going to be honest, I had no idea how expensive these places had gotten. And let me tell you this, uh, and you, your jaw might hit the ground too, because ours did. We were in line, we went and got our food, and it was nothing crazy, because they don't have a ton of you know crazy food options at these places. We each got a meal, which was a, you know our main food and a side. Went and sat, sat and put to the ringer thing, and I, I swear, I thought he said $17. But okay, hold on to your pants right now. Seventy three dollars, seventy, not including what I already spent to get in here. One time experience. <laughs> My husband and I went. <laughs> poor guy. <laughs> we went. What? Because <laughs> they didn't have the prices up anywhere. 
my point being, you live and you learn and you want to find free entertainment. And some people might say, well, you didn't have to go do that. Uh, you could have done a little bit more research. Well, I've been to this amusement park since I was a kid and it was an experience I wanted to give to my daughter. I'm not getting season tickets and we're not going every weekend. We <laughs> Hopefully she doesn't want to go for like a very long time. She got to ride a roller coaster and she, she did not like it, let's just say. But things like movies, sports events, these amusement parks are ridiculously expensive. Not saying not to do them, but do them less often. Make having them or doing going to them an event. Make it feel special. If you go to it every weekend, it isn't special. I remember the turrets going to this amusement park as a kid, and I remember them because they were once a summer and we would meet our cousins and go, and they lived two hours away from us, so it was a whole big event made it special and at that time my mom would pack lunch we would leave the park eat lunch and go back in <laughs> it was not even remotely that expensive back then but mama wasn't playing but making these fewer and far between or just do and for the things that you do on a regular basis staying home movie nights board games potluck dinners with friends there are so many things that we can do on a regular basis and then just limit the things that cost that much Number 12 is to maintain those expensive, high maintenance things. Those are things that are a huge amount of money. Those things that when they come out of your bank account, it hurts. And I'm talking cars, HVAC units, appliances. You know, when, when the washer and dryer go down, that's not, that's not nothing. That's, that's a huge chunk of money. Making sure we are doing the proper maintenance on these things is the best thing we can do. We are giving them their best life. We are allowing them to live the longest, fullest life they can. If we make sure to change those air filters, if we make sure we're rotating the tires on our car, it's another expense right there, just had to replace tires. <laughs> Costco, great deals. Wait for them to be on sale. Side tip. But just making sure that we're doing the things that those manufacturers call that say these are the best ways to maintain those items so that they do live as long as they possibly can. Number 13 is a tried and true frugal living tip. And if you're not doing it, which I believe it's some like a third of Americans actually do it, budget. Tell your money where to go. The thing is save first, pay bills, spend what's left over. That's the bottom line. And a budget does not have to be complicated. If anybody would like for me, I've done budget videos before. They haven't done all that well on my channel. So I don't know if people are really interested, but if you want me to go into more budget details, how to build a better budget, absolutely let me know in the comments down below. Number 14, speaking of eating out at the amusement park, at the amusement park eating out in general. I love to go out to eat because I just like fun, tasty food, and I can make fun, tasty food at home as well. But it's fun sometimes just to have, use it as a way to get out. You don't have to do, do the cooking. You don't have to do the dishes. And 14 is eating at home. Eating out, uh, a most recent survey, it's somewhere between 300 to 350% more than eating at home. Basically, a meal that would cost you $10 to cook at home is going to cost you at least $30 out at a restaurant. 15 is my tried and true meal plan. It is the one thing I've talked about on this channel that I've gotten the most comments from viewers saying that they have implemented it and it has worked. Um, and you don't have to be strict about it. Meal planning is super simple. I do it in basically two simple steps. And that is I have a calendar, a blank calendar, and I have a favorites list. This is a list of 10 to 15 items that my family eats on repeat, on routine. Everybody loves them. And all I do is plug them in based on what, how much time. I usually go into a little bit more detail, meaning um, our schedules are pretty crazy. So if it's a night that we're all, or a weekend we're all home, I'll make something more elaborate from that list. If it's a night when we're all getting home at 4.30 or five o'clock, I'll make something that's much quicker from that list. So it just depends on that week. Now you can meal plan monthly, you can meal plan weekly, you can meal plan every three days. However you do it, meal planning is gonna save you a lot of money. Number 16 goes along with number 15 in the meal planning, and it's to make those list of fav family favorites cheap and easy meals. And you don't have to do cheap and easy meals all the time. That might be when you do 
the when you're busy you do the cheaper and the easier meals and maybe the more complicated or the newer recipes you do when you maybe the weekend when you have more time but to make that list be something that you know you could fit within a budget you don't have to spend a ton of money on the ingredients it's not a recipe that needs 10 to 15 things that's the biggest thing here i mean looking at a quick lasagna a quick spaghetti dinner um, something super simple that you can throw together in a casserole not a ton of ingredients but you can throw it together quickly and having this list just makes it easier not only cheaper and easier but you're able to commit to still eating at home because you don't have to sit there and anticipate all the work you gotta do when you get there. Number 17 is great because it's a tip that's going to help you build that frugal pantry and it's also going to help you with those cheap and easy meals. And it is to know the price of the foods you typically buy. Again, going back to being very unconscious and not paying attention, you may just throw everything in your cart and really not know the true cost of something. At one point, I knew the cost of a gallon of milk at five different um, grocery stores because they were that different in price and I just thought it was interesting. But realizing what something typically costs does two things for you. When you are out at a store and you have this number in your head, you might have to write it down at first, you are able to see if something has gone up crazy in cost, which may not necessarily be obvious, as obvious as egg prices that went up this year, but something that's just slightly more that looks a little off on something you typically buy and buy often, you might go, hmm, I might need to change stores, I don't know what's going on here, or I might need to find an alternative. Alternatively to that, if you see something that you see on a really big deep discount, you know now's the time to pick that thing up. It's going to help you build that frugal pantry and you're going to have a surplus of the, that item that you use often and you got it at the best deal because you knew that that typical price is a lot higher than it was when it was on sale. So time to stock up. I promise this is the last one regarding food. <laughs> and number 18 is to grocery shop once a week. This was a habit that my, I learned from my family. My mom would go and pick up my grandmother and we would go grocery shopping every Friday. I went with them during um, summers and it was just something I always got used to. And then I met my husband and he would go to the grocery store for basically every dinner. And I thought that was just crazy because the grocery store was 20 to 25 minutes from his house. It wasn't like it was next door. So I slowly trained him and showed him, hey, here's, here's grocery shopping weekly. It, it comes with a little bit more planning and a little bit more thought, but it's gonna save you on gas and time. Number 19 is to create a protective bubble around you. There's not so much we can do. But one thing that we can control is having liquid savings. What's liquid savings? So having money liquid means you can get it at any time. It's not tied up in a 401k. It's not tied up in the equity of your house. It's liquid. You can go and grab it. And having that liquid savings helps you so that you aren't stressed out when life inevitably, as it does, throws an unexpected expense or emergency at you. More than half of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. That is like living and walking through life on a tightrope. A swift wind or even a light wind could knock you off in no time. Do you have a safety net? Number 20 is to learn contentment. This is something you will see if you, if you find a frugal person, you will see they're very content in their life. They realize their blessings that they have. They're grateful for what they have and What's interesting about when you are grateful for what you have is you start to see things grow from there because what you've done for yourself is you've allowed yourself to see that I'm okay here and I'm going to be happy and, and things, it's, it's weird, the energy around that starts to bring more of those wonderful things. Being content is thinking about perhaps, and this is not for everybody, maybe there's an exception to the rule, but think about where you were five years ago. Of course, if there's something tragic that's happened to you, this wouldn't be a good analogy to explain. But where you were five years ago, let's say in your career, you've advanced quite a bit from five years ago. Are you content right now in your career? If you're not, and you're looking towards the future, realize five years ago, you weren't content then. 
and you thought if I got here where you are now, you would be content. If you follow that path, that's showing you that you're never going to be content unless you are content with where you are now, unless you're happy with where you are now. And happiness is an emotion and you do have a choice to change that emotion and realize what you do have is, hey, if you're watching this on a phone or a TV, a lot more than a lot of other people. And my last one here is number 21, and it's to invest in yourself, which if you're watching this, you are already doing that. You are investing in trying to expand your thoughts and your knowledge and your financial literacy to be able to make better decisions with the money that you have, that you're working hard, sacrificing your time to get. Investing in yourself by learning, surrounding yourself with people who have similar goals to you, going to the library and reading, constantly reading because there are such great works out there from people who came before us who can help us see the light. As, as, you, as you age and each decade, you feel like, oh, I wish I'd known this when I was in my X decade or this when I was in my X decade. Well, there are people who've already done that. They've written about it. They've written great books. So search out great books, invest in yourself, learn something new, learn that hobby that you've been wanting to do. I want to know if any of these was something that you went, ah, that is something I need to do, or I need to look into, or I need to explore more. Put it down in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this video, one way to help me out in my, on my channel and get the message out for more financial advice and thoughts on money and how to save more and spend less is by clicking on that like button. It helps YouTube to share my video. Also subscribe to the channel. That way you don't miss any future videos from me.